Thursday, we actually have our normal 8 p.m. live stream today, but I had to do this because you know how it is. We get a new guitar, we have to unbox it live. Now, this, uh, and, the, and the reason I do that, for those of you that don't know, some people get in the comments and are asking, you know, what's so exciting about an unboxing in 2023? But we actually do it, uh, we try to do it as kind of um, authentically as possible, if that makes sense. So that, <coughs> excuse me, so that if there's part, you know, problems with the guitar or whatever, uh, we can spot it. And so that you know that there's no tomfoolery going on as far as getting a good thing, you know, getting like special treatment or whatever. You know, we try to keep this stuff as, as legit as possible. So I'm going to show you how this, this is a unboxing sorta. So the guitar is out of the box already because, um, I get all my packages delivered to my mother-in-law's house. It's way easier because she has a safer place to accept packages than I do. So I had to run over there and get it. When I walked in the door, she says, hey, your completely mutilated guitar box is in the foyer. And I was like, oh, no. So this is a picture of the guitar box that I got. I should say this guitar came from gig, uh, the Gibson Garage in Nashville. I did not order this from Sweetwater because they were unobtainium. So I called my Gibson guy that sends me like pedals and stuff for pedal reviews. And I was like, can you get me one of these things? And he's like, yeah, but you're going to have to just buy it because I can't get you one to review. So you're just going to have to pay money like a normal person. I'm like, yes, sir. So that's what I did. I actually just bought this guitar because I've really, really wanted one of these for a long time. And then it shows up looking like this. Now. To be clear, I don't think that has anything to do with Gibson. It's just UPS just blasted the box off the thing. So, whatever. So here it is, and we're gonna try something different. Um, I did go over it really, really well. Um, there's one little kind of ding in the Tolex on the box, the case right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the floor. I think I can show you a second camera angle. So don't. Be scared. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm just going to open it with you. But I'm going to try to do this a little different. Maybe we can. We can. Now I can't see it at the same time. Okay, so pretty cool it's got the Gibson logo on the there and we go Aah. and I know it's a little dark down there but there it is the case is absolutely absolutely legit the pink case um, I don't have proper lighting to show you down there but I have a flashlight in my pocket so maybe we'll see that bright pink Pretty cool, right? All right, let's go ahead and go back to a real camera and we will pick this thing up and we will check it out. All right, I was wondering if that whole remote phone camera thing worked. We're gonna plug it in and we're gonna play it. So, let's get the case. So here it is, the Epiphone. Karina Les Paul, or more accurately known as White Limba. Two-piece body, right down the middle right there. Gold pickups, gold bridge. Very, very good fret work as far as fret ends is concerned. Got a little neck relief in there that we might take out later. Got an interesting keel there that seems pretty cool. I've never had an Explorer, so I'm literally exploring <laughs> the type of guitar also, as well as just kind of the overall quality of the thing. Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom, right here on the back of the peg head. Epiphone Perloid, little can you see that on the peg head there? 
Ah, it's got the little pointers, so your hands bleed when you change the volume. Let's put a strap on this thing. Now the strap pin is in a weird spot, so we're going to have to watch that. It's not heavy either. It's very light. I don't know how this strap length is going to work. Because this is just the normal strap that I use for my other stuff. Ooh. Well, that's very low in rock and roll. Here, let's pan down just a little bit so that you can get a better view of the guitar and less of me. Let's go ahead and throw a tuner on it really quick. I'm just going to use a clip on. We'll get this thing tuned up and see what it sounds like. And then what we're going to do uh, is I'll take some questions on it if you have any questions about this guitar. I did not set up my scale, so I won't be able to weigh it for you. I was literally running in the door. UPS came so late today, and you know, we've got our live stream at eight o'clock. I gotta get ready for that. So I try to start getting ready for that at seven. So, you know, I'm kind of up against it here to try to pull all this off. All right. That's gonna have to be good enough for the girls you go out with. And then um, let's... Totally resonant, bro. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Let's get this thing plugged in and hear what it sounds like. I am going to listen to it first and make sure the levels are good. And then I'm going to mute that microphone and unmute the guitar. That's how I've been doing these. And I'm going to listen in headphones.
Okay, <clears throat> so I've never had one of these before. And the playing position is weird. It's like uh, the guitar sticks way out that way. <laughs> it also sticks way out that way too. <laughs> it's really big. Um, but for me to have the 12th fret way out here, like being traditionally a Fender guy where the 12th fret would normally be, you know, over here is very weird. I was like literally losing my place where I was on the thing. Um, it sounds good. I'm going to have to play with it a little bit more. I just picked a Super Reverb profile on the Tonex and a JCM 800 Tone, uh, Tonex profile. Just I didn't EQ anything. I just literally picked the stock ones and just started playing them. I'm going to have to play with it a little bit more. The pickups are really different than what I'm used to, so I want to play with them. They're dark to me. They're very dark. Um, but it's really cool, and it's really... Um, I don't know if balanced is the right word because it feels it's very rock and roll that is for sure man it's cool here let's ask some or answer some questions if you guys have any I don't want to take too much time because I got to get ready oh let's see any other questions here the guitar is very cool. This is very, very cool. Um, I don't care about Skinner. Uh, what are the knob functions? It's um, volume, volume, tone. So volume neck, volume bridge, volume uh, master tone. It is, um, yeah, it's great. The finish is really cool. It's like a matte kind of, it's not like the matte finish that comes on um, like the tribute stuff. It's not like that. It's like somewhere in between. Um, there is definitely, I don't know. It's really cool. I really like it a lot. Um, let's see if there's any questions. Yeah, they're Gibson pickups. They sound really good. Uh, I am really excited to do this. I do not have a full pedal board made up. Actually, we're working on a pedal board video uh, coming up tomorrow. Uh, that'll come out tomorrow. Does it have a scarf joint? Um, I would say... Um, no. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. But it's... um Okay, so the scarf joint's interesting. It's not the normal angled one that comes off this way into the neck the neck is flat and it's got another piece on the back of it so the scarf joint actually goes this way it goes right underneath the in between the a and the d string right there so the scarf joint is right there and then they put a cap on it so you can't see it. So the only place you see a scarf joint is literally on the side of the peg head from about here to here. It's kind of an ingenious way to do it. It's plenty strong too, really. Uh, I'd like to see Master of Puppets on this. I will not play Master of Puppets because I don't want to get copyright struck in. Uh, how heavy is it? I will get back to you on that. I do not have my scale hooked up at the moment, so I will have to get back to you on that. Um, Gibson Clusen type tuners, yes, with a modified keystone on the back, which is cool, and they're that ivory looking stuff. I mean, they're just plastic, but... Um, and... Yeah, the pickups are a little dark. I'm a little surprised by that, but I think um, it's the Gibson Burst Buckers, I believe. Yes, these are not Epiphone Pro Buckers, but they're still kind of dark. Um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to revisit that a little bit. I'm gonna play it some more. Um, I'll probably post some stuff on Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Dylan Talks Tone because I've been posting a bunch over there lately. And I want to check the setup, make sure the intonation is right. I also want to play with the pickup height 
because they're a little, little wonky. But I think we can, a couple of little turn, screw turns and a couple of little things, and this thing will be perfecto. It's very cool. I would definitely, uh, well, I am definitely going to rock this guitar. This is super, super cool. And for all those of you who think I hate on Gibsons or Epiphones all the time, uh, pff, heck no, because this thing is amazing. This is something that I've always wanted. All right, that's that. It's out of the box. It was out of the box already, but I showed you that story. Uh, if you have any questions, get in the comments, let me know, and uh, chat amongst yourselves. Also, if you have any other questions, um, we are going to have our regular Q&A at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. Leslie will be back with me again. She's feeling fine and everything is cool. And uh, so we're going to do our normal Q&A. Questions come in from Patreon, come in from YouTube members, and then all of you jump in the comments randomly and try to ask a bunch of questions and keep us going until 9. And then we do some off-topic kind of crazy stuff after 9 o'clock. So come by, have your drink of choice ready, and hang out with us for our live stream at 8 p.m. Thanks a lot, and uh, there's going to be more of this coming. This is cool.